Alrighty, this is uh, Lori Gombos from Outback Motor Tech, and we're going to be demonstrating with our technician Thomas how to install our pinnier racks as well as rear luggage rack combo on a CB500X. So you're going to have to remove the, the seat, grab the key, put it in here, turn the key, seat pops, pull it off. And then grab a five millimeter Allen socket or Allen key and remove this bolt and this bolt from here. We already pre-loosened it. So just to demonstrate you how it works, we're gonna show what tools to use. Okay, then you're gonna remove these four bolts back here. These are hex bolts and you're gonna have to use a 12 millimeter socket or a 12 millimeter wrench. Okay, so once the, the bike's ready for the penny racks and the rear rack combo installation, you can also get ready by laying out the products and the hardware, as well as grab the recommended tools, which I will explain. So here we have the left side and the right side penny racks. We have the cross brace. We have the two passenger grab handles, as well as the tail rack or rear rack. We also have the brackets, right side, left side, front and back. We have the hardware here. This hardware here specifically is for the tail rack. And this is M8 by 16 millimeter long Allen bolts for them, plus washers, plus nylock nuts. We also have four of these M8 by 16 millimeter long hex head bolts, as well as two M6 by 16 millimeter long hex head bolt plus washer, two of those. We also have four of these eight by 25 millimeter long hex head bolts plus washer. These bolts are for the, for the cross brace and they're M6 by 20 millimeter long bolts plus two washers plus nylock nut. The tools that we'll be using for the installation is a ratchet, a ratchet extension, 10 millimeter wrench, eight millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, both hex, as well as an eight millimeter Allen socket. But you can also replace it with an Allen key if you have that handy. Okay, we're gonna start with the left side rear bracket. Uh, please note this is not the final version. We're just um, installing a piece that's from pre-production, okay? You might see some uneven surface and some scratches and whatnot. So anyhow, grab the two M8 by 16 millimeter long bolts and grab a 10 millimeter socket or wrench. Although you may not need it at this point, but um, that's what you're gonna use later on. Make sure to keep it loose though. A couple of turns only. Gonna have to, you're gonna have to be able to, to move it and rattle it a bit, okay? You can repeat the same thing on the, the other side. In this case, it's the right rear. The same M8 by 60 millimeter long bolts. Just uh, hand thread them in. It has to spin freely with no tension on, no resistance on, on the bolts and a few turns on, on, on both of them. But don't over tighten it at all. Actually, it's best to keep it nice and loose. Like so. Okay, now we're gonna be using an eight millimeter hex socket or you can use a wrench. And as well as the, the bolts are six millimeter diameter. Push the, the front bracket through the hole here. Line up the mounting holes and then just hand thread in the bolt. Once it's hand threaded and it spins freely, you can uh, you can do a couple more turns. Six millimeter diameter bolt, hand thread it in. A 
few turns on it only, like so. Perfect. Perfect. Now we have all four brackets mounted. We can move on to the next step. Okay, now grab an eight millimeter Allen socket or Allen key and loosen up both bolts on both sides. So the foot peg, the passenger foot peg must come loose. You do not remove the bolts, just loosen them. You need at least a five, six millimeter gap between the foot peg and the foot peg brackets. Like so, the other side, same, loosen those bolts and then back them out a bit. Like that, because you are going to have to put in the spacer. Okay, now this is the preparation for the left side. And once again, we're demonstrating how to install the combo package, the, the pannier rack, the side rack with the tail rack together, okay? There's gonna be a separate video for the rear rack combo, which is, which is the, the grab handle and the tail rack, okay? So this is the combo video right now. That's what, I, what we're showing to you. And we have the tools uh, ready and laid out, 10 millimeter, uh, wrench 10 millimeter socket. We have the left side grab handle, left side pannier. We have one spacer and two of the M8 bolts. You gotta hook the front tab in, the front bracket up here, line up the mounting holes. We recommend that you use blue Loctite on both bolts. And here you have to slide the grab handle in between. It's a bit finicky, uh, be patient. Line up the, the holes and then push the bolts through, or at least the front one, like that. And then the rear while keeping the whole structure in place with one hand. And hand thread it in. Just a couple of turns. Okay, now we're gonna mount the right side. The, the spacer goes in here, but it can actually fall out. So you need to secure some other bolts before you put this in. So you put it in and then pull it snug a bit. This is the, the cross brace installation. It's very important that the cross brace faces up. Okay, we'll show you why. Because if you put it upside down, then the cross brace will end up being too close to the rear tire, so make sure to pay attention. Okay, so we'll show you what it looks like when it's mounted. So you put it in place like that, put the bolts through, and you will see immediately that the tubing now points up and it comes closer to the license plate holder. So it's much better looking like that. And one washer on the outside, and one washer on the inside, and then a nylon nut. And you can do the same in all four bolts. Okay, grab the rear rack and the corresponding bolts and nuts, plus washers. Push the, the bolts through, all four of them, like so. Of course, you will put on the washer and then nylon nuts. Okay, 
So now we have the full combo installed. This is what it looks like. This is the asymmetrical version, which means one side is closer to the center of the bike versus the other one. This is the look. The final piece that we'll show you is how to install the heat shield that will supply. The heat shield will come very handy if you wanna mount soft luggage, which we think is pretty important because there could be some heat. So in case, well, there's a lot of heat here, not so much from the exhaust itself, not the exhaust gases, but the, the exhaust itself, that's gonna be really hot. And if you put a soft luggage that may come in contact, that could melt the, the luggage. So we'll offer a heat shield and we'll show you the installation of that later as well. So this is the, the sequence of tightening the bolts. We'll start with the, the top bolts here. And then we'll go over to these bolts here and, and then this one. So the final step is to tighten and torque the bolts. So first go around and gradually tighten all the bolts, keep them snug. The torque specs for the eight millimeter diameter bolts is 23 Newton meter. For the six millimeter ones, like this one here, or these guys back here, these are 9.7 Newton meter, okay? For the M10 diameter bolts, the foot peg bolts, will take 34 Newton meters. This is the final look. We hope you like it. And if you have any questions, please leave us a comment or you can contact us info at outbackmototech.com or you can call 877-931 Three six, three six. The purpose of the heat shield is to protect mostly soft luggage from coming in contact with the exhaust muffler. Okay, the tools we're gonna be using, 13 millimeter wrench spanner, 12 millimeter wrench slat spanner, a ratchet, ratchet extension, a 12 millimeter hex socket, and a 10 millimeter hex socket. The supplied hardware, M8 by 60 millimeter long hex head bolt, two washers, and a nylock nut. Okay, on the back side, the 12 millimeter wrench. On the front side, 12 millimeter socket with the ratchet combo. And remove this uh, exhaust hanger bolt. Not that bolt, the OEM bolt. Okay, now the heat shield. The heat shield is gonna go on the back side and the bolt will go in from the outside. Like so. On the back side, you will put on the washer and you will spin on the nylock nut. Then grab the 13 millimeter wrench, put it on the back side, 10 millimeter socket on the outside. Before you fully tighten this bolt, you can adjust the clearance, the gap between the exhaust muffler or the exhaust, the OEM shield and our shield. You wanna leave some gap, like a couple of millimeters at least before you, you pull it snug and then finally torque the bolt. Okay, and we have the gap here. We have the gap back there. So it's perfect. So it reaches past towards the outside. And of course it reaches over back here. The OEM torque spec for this bolt is 22 newton meters.